Hello and welcome, this is Cullum Gibney. I started researching star forts after watching a video about them over three years ago. My first port of call was the number one source of facts online, Wikipedia. Let's have a look at what Wiki has to say about them. So, the main article is Bastion Fort. If you search for Starfort, you will be redirected to this page. This is the first fact that you will find here. This article has multiple issues. Yes, that's a fact and a massive understatement. The word of truth in the definition paragraph is fortification. The definition of fortification is a defensive wall or other reinforcement built to strengthen a place against attack. Also, the action of fortifying. For me, this is true if they mean modifying something that already exists to make it stronger and false if they mean excavating and moving tens of thousands of tons of bedrock and earth to create canals, moats, ditches, ramparts, bastions, dikes, harbours, watercourses and embankments over short periods of time. Well, from here it gets a little shady. In a style that evolved during the early modern period of gunpowder, when the cannon came to dominate the battlefield. The early modern period refers to basically 1500 onwards. It was first seen in the mid 15th century in Italy. Some types, especially when combined with Ravelin and other artworks, resembled the related Starfort of the same era. Remember that Starfort will bring you to this page. Okay, we'll. Have a look at origins. Their predecessors, medieval fortresses, were usually placed on high hills. From there, arrows were shot at the enemies, and the higher the fortress was, the further the arrows flew. It's worth having a look at the article on medieval fortresses to see the pre-gunpowder defences and how they were so much inferior to the later star forts. So here we are on the article on medieval fortresses and it is medieval fortification. We can see that Barajas is quite star forty, and Varad is exactly as described in Bastion Forts and as dated in 1617. To me, this demonstrates a deliberate muddying of the waters. So we'll go back to where we were in the Bastion Forts. The article goes on to describe various features and so on. The next main point of interest is construction. There were huge costs involved in creating the fortifications, with Amsterdam's 22 bastions costing 11 million florins and Siena in 1544 bankrupting itself to pay for its defences. Going to have a little look at that statement. Amsterdam. We'll have to take a look. 
This is in Amsterdam. Amsterdam's over here. So, about here. This is Am Amsterdam city centre. Now, with the trained eye, you will see where the fortifications used to be. We'll take that map from the Wikipedia article and we'll superimpose it on Wikipedia, on Google Earth, the aerial photograph of Amsterdam. Now, let's have a little fun and count the bastions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six. Twenty-six bastions on this map and twenty-two mentioned in the Wikipedia article. And how much was a florin worth exactly? There's Amsterdam's 22 bastions, 11 million florins. Well, let's see what a florin was worth. So we've got a couple of options here as to how much a florin was worth. If they're talking about these florins, that would translate to 39 tons of gold and if they were these Dutch florins that would translate to 77 tons of gold for the bastions alone. Interesting. Goes on to mention here that Siena in 1544 bankrupting itself to pay for its defences. If we go to the article about Siena, we see that this wiki article makes no mention of the fortification works that depleted the city's coffers. So we'll go back, have a look at this. Geneva. Let's have a look at the story here. Here's a plan of Geneva in 1841. If we overlay this plan onto Geneva, Just bear with me. So we've got Geneva. And we'll take the map and overlay it. Now we get a very, a very good, a very good fit here. You can see how the city has changed over the years. Yes. Just move it out a little. You can get an idea of the before and after. Now, what is interesting here is that If we have a look at this, bear with me. This 
this building here, I think we can actually have a look at it. Was built in eighteen thirty five, and the opera house across the road was founded far earlier on this site. We'll go back to the overlay. That's rather interesting. The building's not there in 1841 but it is there today. It was there in 1835, as was the Opera House across the road. Yet they're not there in 1841. Again, <clears throat> more questions have to be asked. So, the same thing happens in different towns when you overlay the old maps of which they can be quite hard to find for some towns so we'll go back to the main article on star forts and we'll have a look at obsolescence. We see here that star forts were replaced by simpler, more robust polygonal forts. Or poly polygonal? More robust? More robust than these? Hmm. So, between medieval fortresses, star forts, bastion forts, and polygonal forts, they seem to have covered the star formations pretty well with their jumbled up timeline. Much remains unclear though. If you go to list of star forts, Oh, it's not here. There it is. You will see that there are 40 countries listed. Thirty-nine. <laughs> With 260 or so examples. I have, so far, catalogued over 800 locations with more than a thousand sites in 86 countries. I hope that this video has highlighted some of the history writer's shenanigans and that there is more to these wonderful star formations than we are told. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for more information.